crossing your tongue or something like that lately. Um, I'm donking out pretty hard, man. So spawning the le top left-hand corner, the blue Terran, IVD Apocalypse. Uh, not sure what IVD is, but um, it's just his clan, I guess. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, uh, it's the Protoss player, EG Oz. Well done. Thanks. That was actually my worst. <laughs> I'm just taking a second right now. Um, all right. So, as I said, PVT on this map definitely, uh, definitely a lot can happen you know, for the protest. Like, there's just so many different styles. It comes down to the third base, both this one and this one over here that you can take. Um, I honestly think both of them are pretty easy to take as Protoss. I prefer taking this one over here, even though it's a lot more exposed to a lot of drops and there's a lot of uh, crazy counterplays that can happen from the main to the third base. I still feel like it's just, it's an easy way to place all your units ra uh, over here rather than placing all your units in the middle and taking this large outwards. Yeah, plus place. there's a bit more of a choke at the front of the base there, so if they try to push in, it's a bit easier to defend when the course goes that way. Yeah, but it definitely comes down to stylistic things. Um, but we'll see. Normally, a lot of Aklan Waste games do go into very, very macro-oriented games because it gets a little bit difficult to, to really do crushing blows. And uh, we see Apocalypse is actually going for two barracks. Oh, wow. And this is going to be without gases, so this is a Marine... Looks like a Marine SCV all-in almost. Uh, it's not going to be a Marine SCV on. That's more the 1111, I think. With this style, it's more uncommon, but I've seen it a few times lately. Uh, you want to get a tech lab on one of the barracks. It's probably the one in the back, so it won't be as scouted as easily. And then you go for a quick stim with Marauders and Marines. Well, can he really? He's not even getting uh, re um, refineries, though. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I still don't think he'll do an SCV Marine on, though, because the timing will be so late with the time he's above the barracks. And also, if the Protoss makes, like, a Stalker and a Militia Corps, It'll be so hard to get across the map. No, I, I by the time so. you do it, he's going to just another two stalkers. It's gets shut down. So. But think of it this way, right? Like you let the nexus go up. You know, there's a single. Uh, there's a single. Oh no, he's just going to make a bunker outside. But you know, there's a single planetary nexus that can go down at 5:30, anywhere from 5:30 to six minutes. You let that bait out at the natural, and then just commit all the way into the main phase. But no, he is going to go for. It looks like the command center is. An SCV is already rallied all the way over. Yeah, and um, the this bunker is going to finish, too. Yeah, the big question is, does he actually load the Marines inside the bunker? I mean, why wouldn't he? Uh, so the Nexus finishes. Ah, OK, good point. Yeah, it's similar to the cannon attacking the pylon in PVC. Yeah. But it looks like uh, this will be spotted out. The Mothership core will be able to pick off this SEV and get out in time. Nicely done. But that's it. Another SEV is right around the corner. And it uh, looks like, oh, this Mothership Corps needs to be careful. The Marines are attack moving up, and this is looking oh. really good. Time Warp has to be used, and that's beautiful. That's all that, I need to that have means happen. The Nexus is basically dead. He's not going to have any foot and overtime, yeah. which is what you, actually, what you want here. Exactly. I mean, it's almost better to kill this Mothership Corps and then remake it. It's actually slightly, slightly faster. Uh, I think you save 37 seconds by doing and that. Oz knows how much trouble he's in now. He immediately threw down four gateways as soon as the Nexus got canceled. I think he knows he has to get something done. I think we're going to see an all-in from him after this. Uh, Sentry is going to force field out a couple of these units. Two Marines will go down here. And uh, it looks like they're going to be forced back. But this is really well done by Apocalypse. Nice little early game harassment being done. Five barracks directly behind this. Wow, that's a crazy amount, and but it makes a lot of sense. I like how Apocalypse appears to be pulling back with these Marines now. Uh, if you left them in that bunker and they died, it could make it a lot harder to hold off a potential all in that Oz could do. But actually, he's kind of just waiting up here. Um, maybe he'll go back. I'm not sure. Maybe he'll just stay there. What do you think they're going to do? I'm not sure. I feel like the correct decision is to, to pull back from here. Um, it, it's just so incredibly hard to to really uh, justify some sort of counterattack going into this. But maybe yeah. he's saying to himself, well, I know there's going to be a one base all in that's coming up directly behind this. And similar to what we saw in his game against the Muslim, then, you know, that counterattack definitely seems reasonable. And I like 
his follow-up though to the canceling the Nexus, he has four barracks. Uh, this should make it a lot easier to hold off potential timing attacks with uh, very late gas and just having lots of marines here on. And I think seeing that unit count with that marine, he should know that there's a, an attack coming. Yep. He saw like seven zealots or so, a couple of sentries in the stalker, and I think he's going to prepare for it. And the marine counter attacks going in now, we'll have to see if this can do anything. Well, bunkers are being placed down. I'm not sure if this second one is going to finish in time, but the first one definitely will. Um, the protest army is going to... Oh, it's actually going to go around, so both bunkers will finish in time. I think that gives Apocalypse more than enough time to defend against this. Now, he won't have the ability to, to stim for quite a long time, but that's kind of compensated with five barracks production. I mean, yeah. That's such an extremely large amount. I think Apocalypse has just made the, the correct decisions in terms of his build. And now it's just going to come down to if he has the SCVs standing next to the bunkers to repair them. Uh, he has four of them over. I think I'd like to see him pull the rest of his SCVs as natural next to the bunkers. Yeah. I mean, he has to know if he, he, if he defends against this, he wins the game. Yeah. I think that's what it comes down like, to. There's not much of a follow up if, uh, if this attack doesn't work. He has no Nexus started yet. He has no tech on the way. He has to do a lot with this. You can see four sentries are loaded into this one warp prism, so he was trying to do a, a little bit of uh, of cute play, but it looks like he's just going to go directly into the front. Nice force fields are going to block out all those SEVs. The bunker is going to die. Actually, both of them are going to die, but the Marines are able to get out in time. Nicely done. Not a lot of force fields left. And it looks like Apocalypse, or excuse me, Oz will have to back up from here. Really nicely done by Apocalypse. I mean, he's staying strong. Yes, two bunkers did die, but a relatively small cost and he's just going to continue his marine count and this is such a scary position for uh, for Oz to be in. Yeah, Oz behind this he's throwing down the Nexus. Uh, I think we'll see him taking the Colossi sometime pretty soon. Uh, it's the only transition I think that would make sense from this point. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what he can get done with his warp prism. Yeah, I like what he's doing. Showing that he wants to attack into the natural base. Uh, directly in front and then dropping from behind with these zealots. Four zealots can do a lot of damage. Look at this, a lot of SCVs are going down here. And yeah. meanwhile, there's an attack going in the front. It looks like he had to drop back. Good control, though. He saved all of the sentries, didn't really lose any unnecessary units there. And in the main base, he's gotten quite a few SCV kills. Let's take a look at it. 13 total SCV kills right now for Oz. So he's doing a great job of continuing on. Let's take a look at the income tab. 36 to 31. So there is a slight advantage in terms of SCVs to probes, or excuse me, probes to SCVs, but don't forget about those mules. The mules do account for, right now, nine. So just add on an extra nine. There's a slight advantage for the Terran player. And behind this, Oz is going Colossi. He's made a lot of probes, actually, while doing this. I'm yeah. impressed by how many probes he has in the field right now. He's doing a good job, man. I mean, he knows how to come back from, from the beginning stages because that was such a brutal opening that that Apocalypse was able to achieve there. Uh, Apocalypse is pretty, still pretty far behind in terms of just his stim timing, his combat shield time. He definitely needs that, and now finally getting the factory. But what he does have is that Marine count, uh, and he can still exercise that. Let's take a look. Units tab shows 38 Marines. He almost has as many Marines as he does SCVs at this stage. Now he's going to surpass it. Uh, that gives you the ability to kind of exercise some sort of map pressure. The hard part is, how do you really justify that with, you know, not having stim, not having combat shields? You need to have at least one of them, but normally you wait until both of them are finished. From here, though, Apocalypse, I'm pretty sure, needs to just, yeah, regularly just tech to starport and uh, get add-ons in all these barracks. I would say it would be incorrect to get the third command center. Uh, before he gets all this, because he's already invested so much into getting these units, you need to make sure that you can do something with these units and not j let them just be uh, be just useless development or useless material that you're not developing. And from there, it's like the most inefficient way to do it, right? They're just defensive marines, a lot of defensive marines into a third command center. You could have done a lot, a lot more efficiently. And Oz is moving out now. I think this is a good decision because we see the starport has just finished for Apocalypse. He wants to build about four medevacs usually before he starts making Vikings. That's right. But this attack coming in with the class I, it could make him start making Vikings sooner than that. We need and to be uh, careful though, because he can be very easily overwhelmed. I mean, he has to know that there's an alarming amount of Marines that survive from the early game stages, but 
as you can see, like there's a lot of sentries also that survived from the early stages. Eight total sentries are in this army composition. Yeah, and he has about 24 skills, maybe a bit more. Yeah, I mean, so. you can do a lot with 24 skills. Yeah. <laughs> this is looking really, really good. And two Colossus is that magic number where you can two-shot these uh, Marines that don't have combat shields. So things are oh, basically two-shot. And, uh, yeah, oh my god, this virus are fun with you. He's yeah. taking a lot of damage from the He's losing so much here. A nice force field. Look at that. The Marines are going to get shredded apart. Oz doing a great job. The Zelts do end up dying, though. But the sentries, look at that. They're able to stay alive for the most part. Now killing the rest. The SCVs did uh, go to help out. Another round of units are going to be warped in here. And he's going to use that as a larger buffer. But there are not enough units out for Oz anymore. Or excuse me, for Apocalypse anymore. And a lot of this army is just going to get shredded by the power of these Colossus. The AoE is just way too much. A third Colossus is going to join in the battle. And as you said it, uh, the Starport just finishing really, really hinders Apocalypse. He's not able to really exercise any of his advantage, which is his army count, because he just doesn't have the right army composition. And there it is. GG, ladies and gentlemen. Oz will take the first game, even though he lost his expansion.